morning. Hello. Once again from the city of San Luis. Today we were planning to cross the water to go to the other side and visit another city called Alcantara, which is actually a municipality that is part of the greater San Luis metropolitan area. But to take the ferry, you need water to cross the water. And we got here, it's 9 a.m. now, and the tide is very, very low. Um, the ferry is going to leave at noon. These are basically the ferries that you can take, and you buy the ticket here. The ticket was 25 reais per person each direction. So 25 to go and 25 to come back. So we paid 100 reais because we wanted to buy the ticket for our return as well. But now we have to kill three hours. And after that, we'll be back here to take the ferry. Also, today we didn't come with our own car. We took an Uber from the Airbnb where we are staying until here. It was around 15 minutes and the cost was around 20 reais. And two and a half hours later, we are getting on the ferry. The tide is starting to go up little by little, but uh, it's still low. I think we have to wait on the ferry until the water level comes up and then we'll leave. So after two and a half hours, this is still the state of the tide, but um, it rained a lot while we were waiting. Actually, we got soaked, um, but looks like the tide is starting to go up and hopefully soon we will leave. We made it to Alcantara after a little bit more than one hour on yeah, the ferry. Nice. Like one an hour, hour and ten minutes. Yes, exactly. But we started the day at 8.30. We left our Airbnb at 8.30 a.m. 9 we bought the ticket, but because of the tide, we couldn't leave until 12.30. And now it's like 1.40 that we just got here. So we're gonna discover this city so as you get off the ferry right in front there are some uh, restaurants bed and breakfast a lot of uh, moto taxi basically motorcycles that they will take you where you want and there's other type of uh, taxi also for transportation or anything that you need to get to your destination we are just gonna walk around and see the whole place by uh, walking most probably Alcantara was originally inhabited by the natives that were living in this area. But then during the 17th century, when first the French and then the Portuguese came to San Luis, they also started coming here and tried to occupy here as well. And that's why uh, around the city you will see a lot of uh, typical architecture from that era. Also, at some point, a bit later, in the 17th and 18th century, usually the, the elite would actually live here and they would not live in San Luis, they would come here in Alcantara to stay here. In the beginning of the 19th century, at some point, the emperor, the Portuguese emperor, 
Dom Pedro II, was supposed to come here and visit Alcantara. So people started building a lot of houses and they wanted to build a bigger house and bigger than the neighbor. So everybody went into a frenzy of uh, building houses to be able to maybe host the emperor when he comes for his visit. The problem was the emperor never came. So as you walk around the city, you tend to see a lot of houses that are just abundant or, or they were not even finished at the time and they have just remained as ruins. So what I just mentioned about the ruins in the city <laughs> is like structures like this one that you see it's just an outside wall that is still standing but was not finished. Also when you get up here there is a beautiful view of the water down there that you can see from here because it's, we had to come up a little bit and along the way when you're walking actually even the streets you can see these that cobblestone streets they are from that time that they had built and also you see the typical architecture of that era that I think they have preserved the look still and if you come during the rain season bring a mosquito repellent because it's very critical <laughs> they attack you everywhere yeah. <laughs> like yeah. yeah like we're walking and constantly itching ourselves because they're everywhere it's very humid too today because it rained a little bit before and now that we got here it's hot and humid so perfect combination for all the mosquitoes to come up and start biting you crazy yeah. crazy yeah another tip with the ferry we were sitting in the middle not on the edge um, the ride was a bit bumpy and on the side there were two engines so the smoke and the smell of the you know the fuel burning was constant if you're not moving and you're on the side it's not very pleasant there was a section that was air conditioned and inside so if it bothers you you can stay inside there was some uh, street fighting happening I think somebody went to the bar and drank a lot of beer but then he didn't pay so <laughs> the lady that was the owner of the bar she was angry yelling at him but uh, again in Brazil even when people are fighting they're peaceful they're very decent like just yelling which is normal it's okay and once again another building that looks like a ruin right next to the other ones that are finished and very beautiful so you can definitely compare and uh, when there is like uh, iron like uh, you know the balconies with iron mm -hmm. it means that they are even like from a higher class oh. in the society if they had the money to put iron on the balconies yeah and even the roof i mentioned in another <coughs> video that even the roof when they have two or three layers that it means that they were in a better financial situation the people who were building the house So this building, uh, from uh, what I can see, it's an abandoned church that is also become like a ruin because uh, it's empty in the back, there is nothing, but they just kept, kept the facade of the building. Also behind me, there are these three structures and there is a sign that says apparently there is a project from the federal government of Brazil to preserve the ruins. So probably the federal government has allocated some money to keep the ruins and maybe even like uh, renovate them a little bit so they're not falling apart. This is the Pelourinho. 
uh, it's like where they used to bring their slaves to like to be disciplined they would bring their slaves here and they would lash them uh, in like in public so you'd be more ashamed and then serve as an example for the others like so they follow the rules and they don't try to escape at that time unfortunately and also right across the street from the church there is this building that right now it's the city hall but as you can see at the bottom all the windows they have metal bars because before it used to be a prison uh, now it has in turned into uh, the city hall it's like uh, we, we have seen this kind of setup in many other cities that uh, uh, like in the old time in the 1800 the first floor was always like the prison and then the second floor would be like the city the city management or something like that the holy water actually before when you enter the church and then you come here and do the uh, sign for blessing so you walk around and basically every building could be just a historic site for itself each one has a different uh, architectural characteristics like this one has the tiles beautiful tiles this one with the balconies uh, and uh, little doors at the bottom really really cute Apparently around this area, maybe this building, it's where they used to bring the slaves to, uh, to be sold or bought. So the day here was they, they were going to do the commerce for slaves. Mm -hmm. So we are walking around the city and at the same time we are really feeding all the mosquitoes in the city. They are biting us right and left. It's crazy. Um, we're gonna see if uh, we can find a pharmacy. Yeah, I see a sign over there that uh, we can buy some mosquito repellent because it's crazy. And you move your hand on your skin they don't fly away. They are so stubborn, <laughs> hardworking mosquitoes. This place also is very, very important to mention. This is the place from where Brazil actually launches their rockets. Because of the proximity to the equator, Ecuadorian line, um, this would actually help them save up to 40% of the rocket fuel because you're basically on the side of the earth that is the closest or farthest, like more round. So you don't need to burn a lot of fuel to get to that elevation. You're already there. So this is another place, even uh, San Luis. San Luis is like two and a half degrees below the Ecuadorian line 
here it's two degrees only so that's why they use this place uh, for this purpose as well on our way we also came across this church again one more church and um, we were not very successful for finding mosquito repellent we went to three four different pharmacies a supermarket and apparently nobody has it because i think everybody uses that product so a tip for you guys if you come here make sure you buy before you come here <laughs> don't make the rookie mistake like us so since uh, alcantara has uh, a lot of significance when it comes to the space program in Brazil. There is also this office that we just came across. You have the maquette or the model of the rockets and also a space suit for the astronauts that is on display with the Brazilian flag. Very nice. And probably because the uh, uh, International Space uh, Station, when they go, they have to cooperate with like uh, different countries, like US, Russia, the name of the person, Marcos Pontes, it's also written in Russian alphabet as well. But uh, very, very interesting. <laughs> the city has a lot of historic uh, buildings, but then at the same time, technology also exists here when it comes to space program. This is where we went and we saw the spacesuit and this is the brochure that they gave us. Basically this is the Brazilian Space Agency uh, that we visited. So one thing that she told me is that uh, they are commercializing the space so other countries they can come here and launch their rockets with the satellites that they, they want to put in orbit. And uh, the last one that they did was for South Korea. Yeah, because the other countries they might have the technology but the location this close to the equatorial line other countries might not have that advantage. So why not? If they have the location they can just like give them the opportunity to come and launch the rockets here. Another church that we came across in this location, which is very cute and I didn't know but Mariana mentioned that the interesting thing about this church is that the bells that you see here they are actually the original ones that the Portuguese had brought from Portugal and they're still here they're still hanging very interesting Walking around the city also, you can really feel it, that it has a very small city vibe. Everybody says hi to you, everybody is helpful. We are a couple of people, we ask instructions. And uh, for addresses, they were all like willing to help you. Very nice and very, very sweet um, locals. <laughs> so, I am trying to film Mariana getting rid of the mosquitoes. It is insane guys, so many mosquitoes, it's crazy. So we decided to stop for lunch here um, and the owner, she is so sweet to even give us a mosquito repellent because she saw we were running away from mosquitoes and there is something that creates some smoke also that also makes the mosquitoes go away we're gonna have lunch real quick and then after that we're gonna see what else we can see here we had lunch um it was 98 reais i think i had fish mariana had meat we just didn't film because inside the restaurant was very dark and um, the quality would not be that good i also wanted to try to fly the drone but apparently because it's the site to launch the rockets they don't give you authorization i even tried to get a code 
by text message so that um, I can have the authorization. Usually there's a con there is like questions that you can answer that okay I take all the responsibility and everything but then they allow you to fly this time no the software didn't even allow me to fly the drone so that unfortunately I couldn't do it and now we're just waiting for our ferry to take us back to San Luis so there was some delay coming here because of the tide but then uh, to go back they didn't change the schedule so we didn't have that much time to go around and film as much as we could then there was the mosquitoes and the rain but we tried to show you as much as we could so lucky as soon as we got on the ferry it started raining and going back we just decided to sit inside and not the area in the back that is open so good choice I would say <laughs> We are back in San Luis now and I just wanted to show you also the difference of the tide between now and this morning. This morning uh, you could see the bottom completely and for like a few meters but now as you can see the water is much much higher so the tide is really really high. We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching so we'll see you the next one. Bye. Bye.